Hi, I'm Dr. Khuram Shokat Yusufzai. Today's video is about the graves of princes of the Durrani Empire that ruled over the Indian subcontinent from Kabul to Delhi. So these graves are situated right next to the Tanda Dam in the Kohat city of Khyber Pakhtunkhwa. And as you can see, these graves are situated on the road number two to Tanda Dam, which is a very beautiful place. If you know this guy, Sanjay Dutt, the iconic Bollywood actor played Ahmad Shah Abdali, the Pashtun emperor in the movie Panipat. So the Pashtun ruler was played in this movie about his 1947 win in the battle of the Panipat, the third battle of the Panipat. He was born in Multan, city of Pakistan currently, and he was from the Popal Zai sub-clan of Yusuf Zai Pashtuns. So he ruled over the Indian subcontinent together with the Mughals who also came from Afghanistan from 1747 to 1973. The Pashtuns owned the Kohinoor diamond, one of the largest known diamonds in the world, which was stolen by the British Empire and currently it adorns the crown of the British Queen. And it was so heavy that she could not lift her head when it was put in the crown, so it had to be cut out into two pieces. The Afghan Empire of the Indian subcontinent is divided into two eras. The Sadozais era from 1747 to 1823 and the Baragzai era from 1823 to 1973, ending at the time of King Zahir Shah of Afghanistan which was later replaced by the political uh, era of Sardar Dawood and then the Taliban. The graves which where I will be taking you belongs to Sultan Jamhur and his son Prince Sultan John Sadozai Durrani who are lying in this grave right from the era 1809 to 1868. Sadozai's hold over power was weakening because the sons of Ahmad Shah Abdali, like Tamur Shah was the son of Ahmad Shah Abdali, and all these sons were fighting among each other, like Zaman Khan Sadozai, Shah Shuja Sadozai, and Mahmud Shah Sadozai. This was weakening the Sadozai's empire. So they sought an alliance with the British and the British wanted to install them in Afghanistan in return for the foreign policy to be controlled by the British. So the British spies like Alexander Burns and also Mohan Lal and Sir Aga Khan, they were also part of this great game. Piri Kavanari was the administrator of Peshawar and Kohat. His residence is also found in nearby in Kohat. So Piri Kavanari was great friend with Sultan Jan Sadozai. And Sultan Jan Sadozai and his father helped them cross the Kotal Pewar from the Kuram Agency. Kotal Pewar is the pass that leads them into Afghanistan directly towards Kabul and Kandahar, which were the power centers. In Kandahar, the British spy Sir Aga Hassan Ali Khan was installed as the governor of Kandahar. He was the one who has been helping the British against the Shah Qajar of Iran. So in the Kandahar, the reign of British between 1839 and 42, there was a rebellion by the Afghans against them. Sir William Hay McNaughton was the political administrator 
in Kabul of the British who was controlling all the affairs. He was aided by Major General Elphinstone and his army. But the rebellion which was instigated by the Barakzai dynasty of Duranis under the Prince Wazir Akbar Khan who was the son of Dost Muhammad. Dost Muhammad was the son of Panda Khan who was killed by the Sadozais. Dost Muhammad took the revenge and took over the power and the tables were turned on the British. Major General Elphinston, Henry McNaughton and Alexander Burns, they were all killed in Kabul. Only Sir Aga Khan won and Mohanlal escaped because they were posing as Muslims. Viceroy Lord Auckland was furious because his plan had failed. So he wanted Shah Shuja to be installed as Sadozais and he thought that Sadozais were the rightful kings of Afghanistan. But now the people have forgotten them. Now the Barakzais were ruling Afghanistan. Zaman Khan, one of the brother, one of the one of the son of Temur Shah, had installed a governor known by the name of Ranjit Singh, who had also rebelled, and he formed his own kingdom and called himself Ranjit Singh. He was also helping Shah Shuja Sadozais to be ruler of Afghanistan. So there was push and pull of power between Sadozais and the Barakzais that pulled Afghanistan apart and weakened it more and more. And that was the reason the Sikhs took control of the territories of Afghanistan like Peshawar, Kohat, Durrani Empire lost the territories right up to Delhi, where the Mughals were. The Barakzais rebelled and they fought well. Dos Muhammad had many sons. One of his sons, Wazir Akbar Khan, became the hero and the savior of Afghanistan. He killed the chief general of the six, Hari Singh Nalwa in Peshawar, and almost liberated Peshawar. The whole army of the Sikhs were wiped out by 1839. So the British started playing the great game by themselves without the help of Sikhs. And from 1839 to 1842, a war was fought called the First Anglo-Afghan War. And the Prince who were Sadozais were helping the British. So the cohort governor by the name of Sultan Jan Sadozai and his father Sultan Jamhur aided the British. Wazir Akbar Khan also wiped out the army of the British in total annihilation. He destroyed the army of General Elphinstone and killed everybody right up to Peshawar. And only one doctor was left to tell the story by the name of Dr. William Bryden. So he became the ruler of Afghanistan, later on to be replaced by his brother Sher Ali Khan Barakzai. The British now changed their policy and started supporting the Sher Ali king of Afghanistan because Afghanistan is a landlocked country and the British were helping them in trade and in weapons. So the place Shapur village in Kohat city has the graves of these Sadozais and the graves of Sultan John Sadozai and his father's Sultan Jamhur Sadozai is right there along with the courthouse where they did their administration. The courthouse is actually made in 1868 or 1305 Hijri by the Sultan Jamhur. And here they did their 
administration by doing justice. Nearby is a mosque which is now destroyed by uh, not preserving its architectural heritage and there is a water well or bauli. The water wells are found on the Grand Trunk Road or the Shersha Suri Road from Kabul right up to India and Bangladesh up to Calcutta. But in Pakistan area there are only three water wells and one of them is here. The courthouse was uh, very elegant with this pointed structure on the top and there was Persian inscription on it as the Sultan Jan Sadozais was a good calligrapher himself and he would write nice calligraphy and also draw very nice pictures. The graveyard is filled with old graves and also some new graves destroying its archaeological significance and the mosque of 1868 is also redone by the Shahid Afridi Foundation destroying its architectural significance which is a sad thing because the uh, Department of Archaeology is not taking care of such 200 years old uh, gold or history which belongs to the Pashtuns of this region. So the apathy of the government and the archaeological de departments is shocking and very saddening. The courthouse had uh, fireplaces and there were places for putting the candles. The roof was totally gone and there are nice doors but there were no doors. And there were east to west and north to south windows. I hope they restore this place and don't let it fall because this is so unique. It belongs to the Durrani Empire which ruled from 1747 to 1973 and it belongs to three countries Afghanistan, Pakistan and India. So this should be declared as UNESCO heritage immediately and stop from being destroyed and should be converted as a place where people could visit and understand the history. There were a lot of encroachments uh, happening all around which is also shocking and sad. The Persian inscription said that that in 1860, 1800 uh, there was a man called Sultan Jamur who was born here and there were pretty other interesting inscriptions. Some of the uh, inscriptions uh, were missing because maybe they were stolen or damaged. A few years back, the graves were uh, raided by grave or tomb raiders and completely destroyed. And even now, there were no people uh, guarding this place, which is uh, deplorable. The scenery was beautiful all around. As you can see, it is very near to Tanda Dam. So this place has a great potential for tourism. The um, boundary is completely gone. The dome is also about to fall and it needs, um, you know, repair. As you can see, the graves uh, had uh, places for uh, candle light. Uh, which is tradition of the Israelites to burn candles on Saturday on the graves. So this tra tradition is now disappearing because Pakistan is in the grab of Wahhabism being imported from Saudi Arabia in the form of Deoband and the religious fanatism uh, which is creeping into Pakistan. There was a, a bauli or water well uh, which is unique because there are only three uh, discovered in Pakistan. One in Miawali, one in Noshara and this is the third one. Uh, it's like steps going to the uh, well where you can go down and take the water. This unique construction is found on the Grand Truck Road from Kabul uh, right up to uh, you know India and Bangladesh on the 3000 km GT road or the Shersha Suri road built by the Pashtun ro ruler Shersha Suri. This uh, water well also needs to be preserved because this is also unique along with the mosque of course. 
So the Sadhuzais and the Barakzais rivalry destroyed the Pashtuns because of the infighting and the Sikhs and the British took advantage of this and captured their lands. Uh, the Punjab uh, current was also part of Afghanistan, so was Kashmir, Balochistan, the Sindh area also was the kingdom of uh, Shirsas, uh, of Ahmad Shah Abdali. So all this place which is now Pakistan was the kingdom of Ahmad Shah Abdali, uh, Yusuf Zai, uh, sub-clan Popal Zai. And since he was born in Multan, so he is a Pakistani more than Afghani because uh, in Pakistan the two provinces Balochistan and Pakhtunkhwa uh, belongs to the Pashtuns uh, who are um, in majority as some say uh, because their population is not counted uh, even today properly. The beautiful arch construction and the hills uh, there would be a lot of other structures nearby which has to be discovered and I'm not sure because of the construction of the dam uh, there might be other things which might have been lost uh, under the water of the dam so um, this uh, graveyard and the history associated with it like the rivalry between Sadozais and Barakzais and the Sadozais helping the British um, you know go towards the Kuram Agency Pevar Kotal to invade Afghanistan uh, under general uh, uh, and under uh, the British generals who went there to fight the first Anglo-Afghan war of 1839 and 1841-42 I will make a video about the Anglo-Afghan uh, First War of 1839-1840 and also the Anglo-Afghan War of 1878 uh, which is the Second Anglo-Afghan War and the Third Anglo-Afghan War because they belong to the Pashtuns history of their uh, liberation from the British Raj uh, because the Pashtuns were the only one who were fighting the British the rest of the nationalities uh, did not fight uh, with the British Raj rather they collaborated and did their service in their army but the Pashtuns have a unique history because they are freedom loving and they don't want interference from the other and they have the honor to destroy so many superpowers starting from Alexander, Macedonians, the Mongols, the British, the the Russians, the Americans, the Punjabi army and so many more it's like almost half a dozen to one dozen superpowers have been destroyed giving the name of graveyard of the superpowers to the Pashtun lands of Afghanistan because the Israelites were promised uh, by God that God would help them and they would never be invaded by other powers when Moses uh, crossed the sea uh, from the clutches of the pharaohs. So maybe this is the reason the Pashtuns have defeated so many superpowers as according to Bible, Quran and the Torah. But I will put that in another video. But right now I would uh, tell you about the uh, graves the courtyard is uh, filled with newer uh, graves uh, which has destroyed its archaeological uh, significance. Maybe it belongs to the royal family who lives in Kohart. Uh, I did not have the opportunity to meet them. Maybe I will um, make next video when I meet them. There were some older graves uh, over there belonging to the royal family. And they were in the open uh, it means they were made maybe later so the uh, uh, all the graves had uh, candle lit uh, places uh, where uh, one can put the candle uh, in the Israelite tradition on Saturdays uh, which the people the Pashtun people do over here so um, the doors were missing, uh, although um, uh, 
um, you know there were um, uh, this place needs a lot of uh, restoration by the government and there were a lot of uh, beautiful sceneries all around and the Tanda Dam right next to him would make it very good tourist attraction and the government should actually take care of this place so it's not encroached as it's being encroached from all around um, of by the people who don't understand the historical significance of this jewel of uh, Kohart city and it's the Pashtun history uh, which is under threat from the people and the grave robbers uh, destroying it so the apathy of the local people as well as the government is both very shocking and concerning so this is the grave of the uh, prince Jamhur on the right side along with his wife and on the left uh, you know the tomb has the uh, two grave of his son Sultan Jan Saduzai and his wife uh, there were nice uh, inscriptions written in Persian or Dari language which is the language of Afghanistan um, and the inscriptions uh, are nice mm, you know testament to the Sultan John calligraphic skills because he used to draw very nice pictures there is a picture of himself uh, in the mosque which I did not see maybe it's uh, destroyed which he drew himself while sitting in front of the mirror and the um, you know the uh, actually whatever is written on these uh, as the Persian inscription should be translated. There might be uh, other uh, archaeological finds right uh, next to this place and maybe when I meet next the Durrani royal family of Kohart uh, there is some uh, family of Duranis uh, which migrated from here towards Balochistan and they live in Ziyarat area of the Saduzais so if I have the opportunity to interview them and ask them about their history and maybe they can contribute some more and we would make some uh, nice video about that uh, maybe in future. So this uh, Sadozai's uh, graveyard uh, date is also very significant 1305 Hijri and which translates to 1868. This was the time when the Barakzais uh, actually rose to power and after 1868 that uh, Amir Sher Ali Khan and uh, Prince Wazir Akbar and you know the sons of those Muhammad uh, rule had started and this is right the time uh, when this uh, place finished and maybe their power waned and the Saduzais become insignificant after this time because the Baraksais had taken control of the Afghanistan and Pakistan area. The, uh, the, the finishing of the Sikh Empire by the Baraksais and the later on wars like the Second Anglo-Afghan War in 1878 which is also known as the battle where the Malala, the lady heroine of Afghanistan also fought in it on whose name Malala Yousafzai is named. So the battle of, which is also known as Battle of Maywand uh, was the second Anglo-Afghan war between the British and the Pashtuns. Uh, I would uh, make a video about that soon and the third Anglo-Afghan war which sealed the fate of Afghanistan being divided into two by formation of Durand Line which is the current border between Afghanistan and Pakistan uh, the hills, the Hindu Kush uh, hills or the Karakoram range forms the most of the border and this was done after this was sealed and done after the third Anglo-Afghan war in 1919 uh, leading to the formation of the modern day Afghanistan. Uh, you should note the modern day Afghanistan was formed by the Durand Line, uh, which, which is not accepted by Afghanistan even today, uh, was done by the British Raj in 1893. But since the Afghans never accepted it and they fought a war right after it, which is known as the Third Anglo Afghan War. Uh, where which was done to actually take over the 
areas which were taken by by the British and the Sikhs together, like Peshawar, Kohat, the mostly the area which forms the current Pakistan, right up to Delhi. Uh, but they, it was unsuccessful, and it was done by uh, Durrani Barakzai King Amanullah Khan, and he had to leave Afghanistan and take asylum in uh, Italy, where he died to be replaced by a Taliban prototype known as Bacha Saka and then even to this day the turmoil in Afghanistan has not stopped because the great game of the superpowers is continuing. The Durrani graveyard um, is uh, of the prince, prince and princesses of the Durrani empire of Sadozai uh, dynasty, um, you know, is a testament to the glorious history of the Pashtuns, uh, which they lost uh, because of their lack of uh, um, unity and uh, lack of uh, coordination between themselves and dividing themselves uh, into sub tribes and not accepting the uh, Pashtun identity or Afghan identity. So nowadays uh, it has resulted in Pashtun being weakened and they should learn the lesson from the past that if uh, they combine and have unity as in the time of Amateur Abdali who rallied and combined all the tribes of Pashtuns, he was able to conquer the whole Indian subcontinent and formed one of the greatest uh, uh, kingdom or of uh, Indian subcontinent uh, which was so huge that it started from Afghanistan, Pakistan right up to India, Delhi and since Ahmed Shah Abdali married the daughter of uh, Bahadur Shah Zafar, the last Mughal king, Taimur Shah was born uh, from the Mughal mother and the Pashtun father Ahmed Shah Abdali and Tamur Shah's sons are known as the Sadhuzais, like um, Shah Shuja, Zaman Khan, and Mahmud Shah. So Zaman Khan was the one uh, giving the governorship of uh, area from Delhi up to Atak to Ranjit Singh. So most of the uh, people don't know about this history, and the purpose of my video was to actually. Uh, tell the people to open up their mind and stop thinking in uh, boundaries because the Durand line and the Red Cliff line has divided the Indian subcontinent into three or four countries but it is a one land and it was one land with same culture and same people and mostly the rulers were from Afghanistan like the Mughals and the Durrani Empire uh, who would be really ruling the Indian subcontinent. So I hope you enjoyed uh, my video and I hope you subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon without which you would not be able to see the informative videos which I make with a lot of research and hard work. So I deserve a subscription. So thank you very much. Goodbye.